okay so now we are going to start with the tool so we'll see the navigation and we'll continue with the tool and the stages and uh, transformation uh, each process how do we do and how we are going to um, use this tool throughout your project and how we are using so each component level we'll see all together okay to start up i'll just close these all windows i'll just show you the tool as we discussed in architecture we have services so how to start the services just go to services.ms in the run button and uh, this services may be it can be in the startup type as manual or automatic so if it is automatic you no need to go and do this process every day but as i am a trainer of some tools i have multiple tools in my laptop so what happens i cannot go and make it automatic of each tool because when my on, when i on my system automatically these all are going to start the services so in that case it make me a problem that is the reason in my case i am going to the startup type of the service as manual but usually if you have neo mission the data stays true you see this web sphere application server and this startup type is manual and it would be automatic for you that should be automatic because you don't have multiple tools that as i have mostly so that is the reason you people doesn't have manual it will be automatic so if it is automatic you no need to bother of these things but if any issue comes the connectivity issues then you need to check with the service the service is ibm sphere application server version 8.5 and that is the server name okay and the same way we have another service which is very required to us tns listener so i will discuss about tns listener when we are reading the data from a fire database that to oracle database what is tns listener how does it help us what purpose we require such all information i will be sharing with you while we are discussing with database but as of now just check whether these two services are in startup mode or not so that would be a great help if you don't have any problem with these services so how to see whether this is started or not for example if you go to any see for example this is the parental control service these are this is this is not required for us but i just want to take if you see here you need to start manually so once you start and the service is in on mode then we are going to see stop and restart so when you go for ibm web sphere application server version 8.5 you see stop and restart so when you see stop and restart that service is in on mode so we don't have now issue of a service so once this is on then go to the tool i'll just do the connectivity in the tool even just go to designer client in your windows all programs ibm sphere our information server then you can see the designer so once you click this designer you see this window so click control c and go to control i'll click on login so i might you might know what is host name and what is service name as we discussed earlier in the other video 
okay now this is the window that you see at the first and we see here jobs folder we are selecting parallel jobs and i don't want to choose anything first i just want to show you the empty window of a data stage disabled so you see these all are disabled and this tool is not having anything if i want to see palette i just go to view tab and i click on palette and i see i want to see the repository then i'll click on repository so i don't have canvas now so you choose what type of job you want based on that your canvas will be opened either parallel canvas either sql uh, canvas or server canvas anything can be opened now i want to start with the tool so first i have a scenario to interact with database but this is not a complete database that i want to discuss majorly my motto is to show you some basic stages that we have in data stages and by completing these basic stages we will come hands on experience tool wise we have will have hands on experience so i mean to say it should be on your hands you need to practice easily you need to know what is inflow what is outflow how do you load how do you design a job and what are the stages um, and terminology what is palette what is repository what is canvas where do does the job store such all information you need to see so for that what i am going to show you is i'll just see in the job jobs folder you don't see anything so i created a parallel and i have given a title one as name so i'm going for a basic flow from oracle database to create a data set how this data set and what all information i'll give you but now we don't bother of anything okay just you can go with it copy stage this is the ideal flow e stands for extraction start uh, extracting from database doing some transformation to load into a data warehouse but now i am not discussing with data warehouse directly but i am discussing with one of a file system at the data stage level okay so now how to provide the details and all we'll see so here you need to understand how this data base will have interaction with the database so as i said tns listener service should be on so that is one of the reason okay first of all i'll just tell you what i am doing now okay i'm just going to one database which the front end data is coming in storing in the database that is nothing but our rdbms so i will just show the database so now i have a table called let's start from here so as you see i have a data so this data i want to load it into a file so how this data is stored in a table format so table means nothing but combination of columns and rows so when i have combination of columns and rows i want to pull the data which is extracted this data and i want to load it into a file in data stage i want to create a data set of emp into a data set how can i do that see here i know it is copy stage i can directly do with oracle to file directly but only the concept of copy is a different way but i'll tell you so here i'm loading one table definition that which belongs to database i don't have so table definition means what what is table definition for example 
I'm going to the same database, but I'm using Toad there, and I'm not using any GUI tool. I'm using command line tool. Here. So when I give description of employee the table, I'm getting what the table name, the table code, structure, the table structure. So here what it will tell is you have a table name with these columns. Normally in table if you want to create, you just say create table, table name means will it create? No. We have to provide column names, at least one column you should provide, then only it is going to take your data, else it is not going to take. So how do you create this metadata or table definition into your data stage? How do you call? So for that we are using and we have multiple ways to do that. So one way is go to the repository, see the table definition. The terminology of your metadata means in your database, the column names. Metadata means data about data. When you go for data warehousing concepts, it is a schema. And when you are going for tool data stage, it is table definition. So the table definitions, how do we import into data stage from the source? I mean to say the source can be anything. It can be database, it can be file, it can be Oracle database, it can be Teradata, Excel, anything. How do you take the metadata of the table? That is one major thing that we need to understand. So now, how do we create a metadata or how do you pull your metadata into your data stage. So I have a concept called metadata brokers that is nothing but your table definition in your data stage technology. So once you click right click on your table definition you see import table definition. And another way you see here import and you see the table definitions. So here I just want to specify one thing. These are called metadata brokers. Means these metadata brokers, what they do? These create a bridge line from your source to data stage. What is your source? It can be anything, but as of now today it is Oracle. That may be in the future I may go for SQL Server. But only the thing the metadata brokers get changes. The metadata brokers work look work wise is same. Now to import the table definition, I use table definition symbol and go. So I see these all are metadata brokers. I have ODBC table definitions, open database connectivity. Plugin metadata definitions, sequential file. When you are reading a file source, source as a file, then we use the metadata broker sequential file definition. For now, I need to go for orchestrate schema definition. As we discussed earlier, we have orchestrate structure. I mean to say orchestrate. Orchestrate metadata broker, which is data stage local. As I discussed earlier, while discussing architecture, we have seen orchestrate, what is meant by orchestrate. So now we'll see how do we get the metadata broker. So I used orchestrate schema definition to bring your by metadata. So which type of database it is? It is Oracle. So that is the reason We choose here DBMS type as Oracle. If it is Informix, if it is NetToja, then you need to choose other. Okay, according to that database. See here, we have SQL Server, Informix, NetToja, 
So like this, okay, as of now Oracle, I'll put Oracle and the password is I. So click on next and the database that is Oracle. So here it shows you the structure. Once it is showing your structure of your database means 100% it is going to be your it is going to be your table definition of EMP table and it is going to connect to your repository and load this table definition to your database. Now this metadata broker imports the table definition to your data stage using metadata brokers. Uh, what does the metadata broker does this? It creates a bridge line from your source to tool ETM. Now you want to change the name, column name. You want to change the see here. I just want to show you. Once you give these details and click on next, this is going to be your database table definition connectivity means it is showing your schema means it get connected how did this happen means connectivity this is because of your connectivity through tns listener so tns listener what does it do is it goes to the database it goes to the database and it will verify whether this table structure what is that and it brings to your data stage too. this is not only because of the database creativity so it is because of tns listener so if your tns listener is off for example your connectivity will not be succeeded so it can get failure also Here you can unselect the columns which you don't require to go for them. So for that reason we uncheck it. But as of now I want all the columns, I don't unselect them. Click on next. It is storing where, to, where it is importing and what is the table. And some information of this description, short description, general thing. It doesn't matter very some important, it doesn't matter if it's important. Okay. So this is what number of columns that is going to import and where it is going to import, what is the total name, what is from where database it is, such information you are going to see. So once you click on import, this is the information you get once if it is imported properly. So table definition, Oracle, Oracle imported successfully, click on finish. See now the Oracle conventional. This is the table definition symbol. This is the table definition symbol. This is imported to my data stage repository. But not here. It did not import it to column stack. So my EAP table definition is in my repository only. Why should I go for database again? I will load it from my repository. So this is my repository I want. So click on EMP table, click on OK. Now your EMP table definition is getting stored. So your EMP table definition got imported. Once you observe here, I am going to show you one thing. We don't have here. Please be attention here. We don't have the table definition symbol here. Because the table definition is not that important. Click on load recently, which we imported. Please press on that. Click OK. Now you can find the table definition. And we go to that in data set also, in the stage page, input page, column tab, you see the same columns. 
So what is uh, what is the thing I want to show you here is we have some column names related to the table, and that columns are loading into a file. So once you give this data set, I give some just a sample data set, sample EMT data set. That is, I'm not giving any path to store anywhere. Just I'm going to keep on clumping. So it is asking me to save the job name. See in jobs folder, nothing is there. And you see here, untitled four. I'm just going to create one folder name for our batch. Some batch 101. And under this, I'm going to save this. See, observe here. The untitled one will be So click on jobs folder or batch 101 folder. Click on save. See here, try to understand here. A sample load job has been renamed. And now close it. That is compilation. And now I'm going to run. So once you click on run. See, we'll see whether the data is loaded or not properly. So now here, we are getting some data here. Just compare whether or go to third and see whether this data is populated properly or not. Seven three six nine Smith seven three six nine Smith. So like this, you can give the data, and this is what the data got loaded. So this is just basic. In this, we need to understand only the table definition, how to load the column names from any database or any source to your data stage, as we discussed with. Database, it is only for databases but not for the tools. Okay, so I'll stop here.